Finance Agency sent me. Well? I've come about a position. Elf parlour maid, was it? And a house parlour maid. I am the house parlour maid. Well, come in. I'll tell Mr. Hudson you're here. Who's Mr. Hudson? The butler. Oh, the bloke all in black at the front door. Waiting there. all together then, have they? Oh, I don't look. If you've got blood on them potatoes, my girl, you can throw them away and start all over again. And get a move on, girl. Who are you when you're at home? I just wear now, Alfred. He's taken my button hooks again. I know he has. Well, what am I going to do? Go to Miss Hudson, Miss Roberts. Don't come whining round me. I'm all behind like a cow's tail. Well, well, spying on you. No, I've been sent by What have you done with my button hooks? Oh, Alfred, get out from under my feet. Somebody answer that bell, Alfred! Cat got your tongue as it will be off. No, I just about to explain lot everywhere. Oh. My name is Clemence. 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 I've come about the position. Clemence. What sort of a name's that? Answer me up. Are they in your silver box or not? Silent woman is above rubies. Well, it's a French name. French? We don't want no foreign muck in here. None if you're nasty, old Josine. Thank you very much. Greasy mutton again, then, Mrs. Bridges. Oh! None of that behaviour in my kitchen, Mr. Pierce. Keep that for your stables. <laughs> and be off with you. Oh! The milk's cold. Now see what you made me do all. This place will be the death of me. What's wrong with mutton, anyway? I'll bleed to death. Good. Look, hasn't anyone seen my button hooks all too all furnished? Well, what's to become of me? Let your discourse oh. be yea, yea, and nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than this is of evil. Oh. oh! Who's he? Alfred, the footman. Take no notice of him. He was brought up religious. He's got a I thought I told you to wait in there. I'm sorry. Cook said she wanted to I know. said nothing of the sort. And it's Mrs. Bridges, if you please, not Cook. This is a gentleman's house. Not making a very good start, are we? Well, come on. Mr. Hudson's waiting for you. The new girl about the position, my lady. Oh, yes, Hudson. I was going to come in, will you? To whom it may concern the bearer of this... <laughs> Verily, this letter is well recommended for domestic. Mm -hmm. What is your name? Clemence Dumas. And you are French? Ah, oh, French. You must call me Milady when you reply. Oh, I'm sorry, Milady. This letter appears to be from someone whose name I cannot read, who lives at the 
Chateau Lac du Champ near Lyon. I haven't heard of it. No, neither did I, Malay, till I got there. Why did you leave your previous employment? My mother was took sick and I had to return to England. I hope she's better now. But, my lady... It's important to be able to concentrate on your work. Oh, that's all right. She died. I'm sorry. I must assume the agency has checked your reference. Yes, that's right. You're new to service, are you not? That's all right, yeah. Never take that girl off. Uh, she couldn't tell a feather duster from a ball constrictor. Quite unsuitable. She went to the front door. You're quite right, Rose. Untrained and blind to all decency. Is luncheon ready, Mrs. Bridges? I confess to a wholesome appetite. Eh? Two shakes of a lamb's tail, Miss Tradson. I've had trouble with range again. Dad's gone into the cold. Hasn't it, Emily? That must be the morning room. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Right, thank you, Rose. Clement Stuma. Fancy trying to get into service with a name like that. Well, I hope she gets taken on. I like to. It's not for you to hope, nor not to hope neither, for that matter, Emily. It's for you to keep the fire in. You let it go out on purpose. Oh, I never did. The coal's wet. And that's Alfred's fault. He always leaves the coal house door open. I'll put you in the coal house. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Don't pass blame, Emily. Ah, oh, no, you're against me too. Oh, yes, Hudson. I intend to engage this young woman. She'll have her dinner in the servants' hall and collect her belongings afterwards. Rose can show her what to do. And the young person's name, my lady? Sarah. Though my name is Clemence. Clemence is not a servant's name. Yes, but I don't like... Go with Hudson, Sarah. And remember, you're here on trial. Yes, my lady. Hudson, do I have to be called Sarah? Yes. I don't like it. It is not for you to question your better. Are you my better? Indeed I am. What makes you better than me? You're not being rude. I just want to know. I am older than you and therefore wiser. And I have learned humility. You? It is a hard lesson, but once learned, never forgotten. How did you learn it? My grandmother was a proud woman and died of starvation. I just can't abide cold food. Greasy mutton. It'll taste all the better for the... Waiting. Emily, another plate. Alfred, get a chair. May the Lord bless our endeavours and grant us conciliation to that rank in which in his infinite mercy he has seen fit to place us. And for what we are about to receive of his great bounty, may we be truly grateful that in the end we may find favour in his eyes and sit in honour at his table. Amen. 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 <coughs> Sarah is joining us as underhouse parlourmaid, Miss Roberts. Indeed, Mr. Hudson. On trial, I take it. On trial. Rose, you are to instruct Sarah in her duties. Yes, Mr. Hudson. With a good heart and a glad will, if you please, Rose. Naturally, Mr. Hudson. That's Miss Roberts. She's her ladyship's personal maid. That's Mr. Pierce. Mr. Pierce is the coachman. That's Emily. Emily does. Silence, if you please.
Everyone is served, Mrs. Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. You may talk. Some mutton again. What's wrong with mutton, Mr. Pierce? With a nice drop of caper sauce? <laughs> nothing, Miss Roberts. Nothing at all. Perhaps you prefer to eat hay like your horses. <laughs> Forget I spoke, ladies. Can I have the caper sauce, please? It's not food for young women. Overeats the blood. Millions would be grateful for what we have, Mr. Pierce. Yes, Mr. Rusty. Wouldn't you agree, Sarah? Mr. Hudson's addressing you, Sarah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that the name's so unfamiliar. Could, couldn't I be called Clemence if only down here? Oh, my days, I've never heard of such a name below stairs. Whatever was your mother thinking of? Search the good book from cover to cover and not find that name. Lady Marjorie's wishes must be respected. Clemence. Good name for a filly, I'll say that. But hardly a human. I think it's a lovely name. As I was saying, millions would be grateful for mutton once a week, let alone mutton once a day. Wouldn't you agree, Sarah? Yes, Mr. Hudson. <laughs> Did you really live in France, Sarah? No. Were you in service there? No, I lived in a chateau. Once I had my own maid, like Lady Marjorie. I think we must learn to take Sarah's statements with a pinch of salt. Oh, I don't know it. Didn't say you did. Perhaps you just exaggerate. If her ladyship finds Sarah satisfactory, I'm sure we all do. It is not for us either to choose or judge our companions in service. Rose, as you know very well. Have a little more kind of sauce, dear. Thank you. Say something in French, then. Some other time. <laughs> What are you laughing for? Don't you believe me? You're as English as I am. I'm not. My mother was a gypsy. I can read hands and tell the future and put curses on people. The Lord preserve us, the witch of Ender herself. If my mother was a gypsy, I wouldn't speak of it. I nearly ran off with the gypsies once when I was a girl. That was a long time ago. Oh, not as long as all that, Mrs Bridges. A little more sauce, Miss Hudson. I think that's just a scrape left. Thank you. I'm not ashamed of my mother. She was a gypsy princess and very beautiful. More mutton, Mrs. Bridges. Just a morsel, thank you, Miss Bradson. Uh, a French count saw her and married her, and she died giving birth to me. Well, my father married again a very wicked woman, and when he died, she treated me like a servant, and in the end, she threw me out altogether. But I've got lawyers fighting for me, and in the end, I'll come into my own. In the meantime, I must live as best as I can. Oh, it's just like a story in a book. Exactly, Emily, a tale from a penny novelette. All very well for a kitchen maid, but not what one expects from a house parlour maid. Say something in French, go on. Would you like me to read your hand for you, Mrs Bridges? Shall she read my hand, Miss Hudson? By all means, Mrs Bridges, if it pleases you. After dinner. Oh, do mind, do mind. Oh, wicked nonsense. <laughs> There are more things in heaven and earth, Rose. Truth is stranger than fiction. It's unhealthy and dangerous. Not if you have a clear conscience. It didn't give them to mortals to know the future. Oh, yes, it is, but it's against the will of God. And look what happened to King David. <laughs> he didn't do so bad, though, did he? <laughs> Dirty old devil. <laughs> My gift comes from God, not a devil. She ought to be locked up. Rose, that's enough. Well, why won't she say something in French, then? Answer that. Because she go and that's why. Because she don't choose to, that's why. Don't let these old prudes upset you, Sarah. What's for putting them, Mrs Bridges? Rolling poly, Mr Pierce. And don't you go telling me nothing I don't want to hear, or you'll get your ears boxed. And even as King David went to the Witch of Ender, so did Mrs Bridges seek knowledge from our Sarah here. <laughs> Someone's going to get struck by lightning. Oh, Sarah. Say something in French. Go on. If you can. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Oh, près de ma blonde, qu'il fait bon, fait bon, fait bon. Oh, près de ma blonde, qu'il fait bon dormir. Oh! 
Come on, get up, it's half past five. Oh, Alfred, I'll kill you. Where am I? You're in Mr. Bellamy's house in the servants' quarters. Where else? And it's time to get up. If we get behind in the morning, there's trouble all day. So up with you. Oh. My legs won't work. My feet are cold. Oh, they will. Because they must. It's half past five. It's better once you're up. You'll be late. <laughs> I trust you can remember your duties. When you're dressed and ready, what then? Uh, I'm going to make sure that Emily's got the range working properly. So that Mrs. Oh, Bridges can get on. Then lay up breakfast in the servants' hall. Then there's Lady Marjorie's tray. And don't forget to shine up the milk jug, for goodness sake. And don't leave sticky finger marks. The last girl always did. Then there's the servants' breakfast. I suppose I'm allowed to sit down and eat. After breakfast, make sure Emily's not hiding in the boot hole again. If she is and won't budge, inform me. I shall be brushing and dusting in the drawing room and the morning room. Well, go on. Uh, then... Upstairs and clean out the grates and relay and light the fires. Go up and find the matches. Oh, you've got a good memory, I'll say that for you. Oh. Quiet as a mouse doing the grates, please. Oh. Call me to draw the master's bath. I'd better do that for the time being. But you fetch the hot water. Now, if the boiler's troublesome, you'll have to use the hot water kettle. Now, after the baths, I'll lay upstairs breakfast. I'd like you to help me there. And make sure Emily's got all the boots and shoes done. She keeps falling asleep in the mornings. I don't know why. And keep out of Mr. Bellamy's way, whatever you do. Why? Just pretend you're not there, especially in the mornings. Scruffy boots, that'll never do. Do you want to borrow a pair of mine? Not a spare pair. Thank you. It's small, I dare say, but better sore feet than shabby boots. Oh, and today's the day for fresh bed linen. Now, it's a bit of a rush, because it's got to be done while they're having breakfast. A <sighs> lady Marjorie eats like a little bird. Oh, and the towels, of course. If you can't never remember done, it all. Well, you must. Anyway, here's a list. Oh, I forgot. You got it upside down. Oh, so I have. Put your collar studs in, girl. I'm cold. Mm, well, work soon warms you. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Bridges will kill me. <laughs> oh, and I'm late with her morning tea again. Oh, oh, give the fire a blow and a puff for me, will you? It's not cold properly yet. It never has and it never will. Where is she? Oh, who do you think? Oh, it's you, Matty. She's on her way down now, only I was late calling her. She's in such a wax. You should be laying out the servants' breakfast. Go on. Yeah. Well, go on! Strike me before it gets to you. 
Oh, I swear I did, Mrs. Bridges. Cross my heart and hope to die. Oh, Lynette's head off the kettle was. She's waiting for you, Mrs. Bridges. Oh! Matty. Matty? Why didn't you say so? Put a cloth on the table before you lay up. Of. Why isn't that table laid? What have you been doing? I shall require my best silk hat. Oh, very good, sir. I'll send it round to the hatters for ironing this morning. The uh, new underhouse parlour maid, sir. I see. Sir. Oh, it's quite nice, isn't it? But why change? Mornings were housemaids, afternoons were parlour maids, see? Oh. Come on. Ladyship's tray. She'll be expecting it when she comes in. The milk jug's in the larder, Rose. Yeah. Hey, where does Lady Marshby go to in the afternoons? In calls, mostly. We're just driving in the park. Uh, to while away the time, I suppose, till Mr Bellamy gets home from Parliament. I wouldn't fancy it. Oh, I would. Imagine driving round and round in a fine carriage with strong white horses and everyone looking at you. I'd like to be your ladyship back. Always punctual. Sure, I'll take it up. No, not until she rings for it. And I'll take it up this afternoon. You can fetch it if you behave yourself. A uh, very pleasant afternoon, my lady. Yes, isn't it, Hudson? Your tea, my lady. Thank you, Rose. Mrs. Bridges thought you might be a bit hungry, my lady. Rose, how do you find the new girl? Quite satisfactory, my lady. I hope you're looking after her. Of course, my lady. Will that be all, my lady? She claims to be something of a sempstress, so I set her to repairing the tapestry cushion. I thought we were going to send it out, my lady. It's very old and very delicate. Otherwise, of course, I would have undertaken it myself. Uh, she has delicate fingers and nice, neat movements. Yes, my lady. Will that be all, my lady? I'd be interested to see it as soon as she's finished it. Very good, my lady. If I was rich, I'd have a little cottage in the country. And no one to shout at me. And lots of kids. I'd never forget their names the way our ma'am did us. Oh, that's boring. That's not exciting. I want excitement. Time for a chat, I see. The teas are poison. It's full of tannin. Sarah? Yes? I thought you were supposed to be sewing Lady Marjorie's cushion. I hope you know it's worth hundreds of pounds. You might at least be getting on with it. I've done it. Where? Show me. I see. Well, you better take it up to her then, hadn't well, you? Well, now I haven't and finished my tea. Oh. That's beautifully done. Thank you, my lady. Where did you learn to sew like that? Uh, in a convent. In France? Yes, that's right. Were the nuns good to you? Most of the time. But sometimes they dress me in a long canvas robe and shut me up in a dark cell with no food or water for a whole day. Why? To teach me to be thankful, my lady. What for? God's mercy. 
That was a strange way of bringing you to know it. Yes, that's what I said, and back I went. What other talents have you besides sewing? None, really. You sure? Well, I can tell fortunes, hands and tea leaves. I could do yours, my lady. What nonsense. No, I'm very good at it. I'm never wrong. I know what my future is. Do you, my lady? Very well, Sarah. What do you see there? A tall, dark stranger from overseas, I suppose. Yes, there is. What, bringing good fortune with him? Bringing mixed fortune, good and bad. He bears a sword and, and he's about to use it and should not. Dear me. Oh, does it mean something to you, my lady? Indeed it does not. You see, there's first an increase in wealth, then a decrease. Now you are surrounded by many friends and they all wish you well except one, a false friend. How alarming. You should watch your elf. That's all, my lady. Oh, there's a gentleman of great authority, near the rim, nearly out of the picture, but I think, yes, I think he's coming nearer to yes, you. Yes, Mr. Bellamy, you'll be home soon. This is superstitious nonsense. No, my lady, That'll I... do, Sarah. You can go now. Sarah? Mr. Bellamy wanting to dress for dinner. A lady should see me gloves. Oh, there she is bringing for me. I can't be in two places at once. Alfred, are you sure you haven't seen them? Gloves? What should I know about gloves? Well, I, I was sewing a button on them. You must have seen them. Alfred, take these up to the dressing room. Give the trousers a final brush before you lay them out. Now, remember, that waistcoat is white and must remain white. Now, look sharp. The carriage is ordered for 8 o'clock. Emily! More coke in the boiler at once. The bath water's not properly hot yet. Oh, did everything at the last minute. Her gloves in Alfred's knife box. And make sure what a pearl. Cool and calm, Miss Roberts. Cool and calm. Be Mr. temperate. Mr. Hudson. Yes? The carriage is here, and Mr. Pierce wants to know what time they're leaving. Tell him 8 o'clock. He's early. No, no, not there, my girl. In my pantry. Help, sir. In me, I can't bear to be shut in. Does Mr. Hudson know you're going? It's only for a minute. Well, you have to ask him or you get into trouble. But well, I'm not asking him and you're not going to tell him, are you? No. Right. Then I'll tell your fortune for you when I get back. But if you breathe a word to a living soul, I'll curse you and your blood will turn to ice in your veins and you will die horribly within the week. There. Emily. What's it matter? I won't be needing them much longer. No. When I breathe, I get a pain. The good die young, they say. And I have the impression on me chest. <coughs> I wish you'd stop reading that rubbish. It isn't rubbish. Things like that do happen. I think Sarah's more tragic and more romantic than anything in a book. I would lay down my life for her if I was asked. Would you? Well, where is she then? I do not know. I am silent. What's the matter with you? Torture me to death if you wish. My lips are sealed. Oh, for goodness sake, I only wanted to turn down the beds. It's on her list as clear as daylight. Or do I have to do her work too? And you can pull out my toenails one by one and I still shan't speak. What's the matter with that girl? Why isn't she in bed? I want to wait up till they come back. There please. won't be anything to say. There might be. It, it, they might bring someone with them. Oh, a tall, dark stranger from across the seas who fall in love with me. And take me away from all this. It's Sarah. She's been putting ideas in her head. She has strange powers. She sees things we can't see. Stuff and nonsense. We can't have this, can we, Mrs. Bridges? We cannot. I was just going to fetch some bread and cheese. 
Be careful a bit, Rose. Very much, Mrs. Bridges. I am a bit peckish. Emily, are you sure you don't know where Sarah is? Oh, she's I not can't... in the kitchen. She's not in the pantry. Emily, look at me. I want the truth. All right, then. Who's been at my locker? Where's Miss Rudson? It's a matter for the police, nothing less. Miss Rudson? Oh, what's happened? Somebody's stolen a bird out of my larder. That's what's happened. Are you sure? Do you think I don't know me own larder? Miss Rudson! Emily, where is Sarah? She hasn't gone out, has she? Did you call Mrs. Bridges? Oh, I did indeed, Miss Rudson. Uh, why was that, Mrs. Bridges? Because a plucked and dressed bird cannot walk, Miss Rudson. We have a thief in our midst. A human fox, a chicken stealer. And when I lay my eyes on her, I'll skin her alive. Or him. Silence. Kindly assemble the staff in question. If that's what you want, Mrs. Bridges, how long has the melancholy fowl been missing? Twenty minutes, Miss Rudson, since I last saw it laying on the shelf. Oh, in that case, we have the staff in question assembled. With the exception of Sarah, who seems to be temporarily absent. You would hardly steal your own bird, Mrs. Bridges, and then complain of it. We know Rose would not, could not. And if Emily had done it, I swear there would still be feathers round her mouth. It was a plucked and dressed bird, Miss Rudson. Not a feather left upon it. Even the back fluff was singed. I, I was speaking in metaphor, Mrs. Bridges. I am led to the conclusion that the guilty party is none other than Sarah, the stranger in our midst. Not a gypsy princess, after all, but a common thief. I knew it. And what is to be done with a creature so unnatural? I stole it. And in what dark hole, I wonder, is she hiding? It was me, not her. Emily knows. I know nothing. I don't want my blood turned to ice. Oh, all this fuss about a bird. Yet it was you who summoned me, Mrs. Bridges. Well, uh, perhaps a rat took it off. Or a team of cockroaches working in harness, I dare say. The principal is at stake, ladies. A chicken today, emeralds tomorrow, and the whole staff under suspicion. It is not, after all, as if Sarah had the privileges uh, granted by custom and common humanity to the cook. When she comes back, I'll skin her alive. Oh, I swear. I swear I don't know where she is. I, if I she swear. comes back, it'd be better for everyone if she didn't. Well, there she is. Sarah, I never told you. Sarah, they come in here. They torture, but I never said a word. I Shut the door. So much Liar. I didn't whisper. If a great whisper, Sarah, Slut. honestly, I didn't even tell you. Walk in the streets at night. Not Rose, that's enough of that. You too, Emily. We have reason to believe that you have stolen a chicken from Mrs. Bridget Larder. That you have crept out into the night to dispose of your forbidden loot and have returned with your ill-gotten profits concealed about your person. What have you to say for yourself? Well? If Mrs. Bridges can do it, why the hell shouldn't I? Well? Alfred, you go to bed now. Thank you, sir. Mm. You'll have nothing, my dear? No, thank you. Strange to see Archie Haslip across the dining table again and his new wife. But I see why it all happened. What eyes that woman has. One can hardly excuse it. It's the thin end of the wedge, you know. Soon we'll see divorced people everywhere, be obliged to chat and smile as if it were nothing unusual. In a moment, I'm afraid you will say, and the old queen hardly cold in her grave. Well, it's true. I don't like change. It goes too quickly. It becomes not progress, but disintegration. Spoken like a good English woman. And an excellent wife for a Tory politician. Oh, tomorrow doesn't bear thinking about. Joe Chamberlain on tariff reform again and the front bench shuffling in its shoes. Well, the Prime Minister should be more firm with him. My father wouldn't have put up with it. Your father? He'd have run England single-handed if he could. He knew the value of firmness and resolution. And you're your father's daughter. I hope so. I don't bother your pretty head. 
These are men's matters. Don't say that. Now, why should I not bother my head? It has precious little else to fill it. Oh, you do so much. Well, what do I do? You run this house. The servants do that in their own way. Yes, and a lot goes on that I know nothing about. I saw a light downstairs. The servants are still up. Have some hot milk. Everyone worries too much about me. Now, don't ring. You know, I don't like bells ringing late in dark corridors. One day, you know, if things go on as they have been, you might ring and ring and no one would ever come. Mm -hmm. There'd be nobody there. I'm not as bad as you think. Don't get the police. You're a thief. Do you deny it? When I saw Mrs. Bridges doing it, I thought anyone could. Then you were wrong to think that you were as good as her. No, I didn't think of it that way. Please. Oh, please, is it now? We have changed our tune, haven't we? Look, I'll never do anything like it again. I've given the money to Mrs. Bridges, but good will it do to have me pinched? I thought we was all on the same side. Poor girl. One could pity her, I suppose. She's a moral imbecile. What have I done to you? You pretend to be something you are not. You make yourself out to be better than us. Not better. Just more interesting. Well, it does no one any harm. It's only a bit of fun. How can lowies be fun? They're not lowies. They're make-believe. You are what you are. There's no escape. Not for you or me. There must be some escape. Oh, to be an under us parlour maid's not so terrible. I think it would be wonderful. In a minute, I'll remember your ear, Emily, and send you to bed. But I, I ought to be here, Mrs. Bridges, as a lesson to me. What in? Pride gone before a fall. Uh, murder will out. Oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Anything you like, I believe it, but please don't send me to bed. Bed? Ah, oh, please. Nothing exciting ever happens. Why can't I stay up and watch the police take her off? Because the police aren't coming, Emily. Not if Sarah chooses to confess her fault. You are a common, ignorant, worthless girl, Sarah. Can you deny it? No. And a liar and a thief. Yes. You are an ordinary person, Sarah, like the rest of us. Yes. And you told lies to Lady Marjorie. You lied your way in where you had no right. Yes. And you have no French blood in you, let alone noble blood. No. And you are lucky to have found this home with us. Yes. Very well. The police need not be called. Thank you. Uh, but upstairs must be informed. Oh, no. With a recommendation for mercy. Oh, coming from you, Rose, I'm sure it'll be accepted. Look, don't tell Lady Marjorie. I'd be so ashamed. Oh, she's not all bad, you see. She's capable of remorse. Look, take this Bible, Sarah, and read... Read this page. You will find written there the Ten Commandments. Now take note of the Sixth Commandment. Thou shalt not steal. Now repeat it to yourself. Make her write it out like at school. Not a bad idea, Mrs. Bridges. Rose, fetch the pen and paper. She will write it out a dozen times in her best hand, just to suit you, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, thank you, Rose. There, now. Take the pen and write for Mrs. Bridges. Thou shalt not steal. I, I can't, Mr. Watson, I can't. Go on, girl, write. Mrs. Bridges is waiting for proof of your reformation. No, please. Now, why not? It's just... I can't write! <laughs> I don't know how. You can't write. Not even my own name. <laughs> Mr. Madison. Well, didn't they send you to school? I was needed at home. Didn't your mother learn you? I never had no mother. I was everyone else's mother from the age of five. They went to school, I stayed home. She's very upset. I think, uh, perhaps, Mr. Hudson. I dare say you're right, Mrs. Bridges. What? I dare say there's no necessity to tell them upstairs about this unfortunate incident. A missing chicken, a, a dog, a cat, who's to say? These things will happen, even in the best regulated household. Thank you. Now, up you go to bed, my girl. Yes, Mr. Hudson. 
Go on, I'll do that, Gil. Oh, Rose, I'll turn down the lamps. Just do tidy up a bit, will you? No one. They've gone to bed. Who? The master and Lady Marjorie. Oh. Let you go up there. Hmm? Bit of trouble downstairs, raised voices and have Mr. Hudson's mostly. Oh, that. Um, we was just having a bit of an argy bargy down there, all of us. Little Conta Tom, you might say. Tell you something, sir. They're not hypocrites. There are a lot of them. Write out the sixth commandment, thou shalt not steal. How do you know that? You wasn't there. I know everything that goes on in this house. You was listening at the keyhole. There's violence uh, and sin in all of us. Filth and degradation. Let go my arm, Alfred. Beware the lusts of the flesh. Stop it. Let me go to bed. Kate was the same. Who's Kate? Under housemaid, before you. Lust not for thy neighbour, for the wrath of the Lord shall be visited upon you. rooms down there and us crammed up here together. Well? Who slept in this bed before me? A silly girl called Kate. What happened to her? She isn't here anymore. Why not? Curiosity killed the cat. I expect she just withered away. I'll we'll probably find her. All shriveled up in the corner like a dead insect. I know. I'll ask Alfred what happened to her. Shall I? He's only up top. I could pop up there and ask him. You've got to be up at five. I hope you know your list. Yes. But you can't. You can't read. Oh, I was only saying that. Ooh. I was only making it up. Then read to me now, if you're not struck dead by lightning. I'm sorry. I don't know what comes over me. It must be difficult for you, I suppose. I'll get up with you in the morning and show you what to do. Thank you. Now go to sleep. Or we'll be good for nothing in the morning. Why are you being so good to me? I like the house to run properly, that's all. And we should all help our neighbours. I used to dream of all kinds of future for myself. I never thought I'd end up in service. It's not so bad. You're safe. You know where you are and what's going to happen next. The outside world is dangerous. Well, perhaps it only seems so to us because we're ignorant. You know, if you could read and write, you would not be so frightened. And then perhaps you'd behave yourself. But there are so many things I want to do and be. And time passes so quickly. You've got to learn to accept. Ugh. Well, I was going to be married once. Mm -hmm. He was killed in the war in Africa. 
They gave him a medal for being so brave. Silly bugger. Why did you go into service, Rose? Oh. Well... When I was a girl on Lady Marjorie's family estate, a carriage used to pass our cottage door every Thursday on its way to market. And the lady and gentleman what rode in the carriage, well, they'd once been like butler and housekeeper, a big family house nearby. Well, my mother put me into service, so I too would ride in a carriage one day. Oh. That was quite a sacrifice for her. Oh, just sometimes. I do wish that carriage had taken another route to market. Oh. You're oh. very clever, aren't you, Rose? Oh. But you got more... Oh, no. What? Rose, what is it? Oh, it's only Alfred having one of his bad dreams. Does it happen often? Quite often. He's a bit touchy. Oh. But Mrs. Bridges looks after him. Well, we all do, really. You're good to him. He's one of us. He's not. He's not going to murder us in our beds, is he? No. I'll take care of you. Would you like me to brush your hair? Mm hmm Well, my mother used to do it for me when I was little. It makes you go to sleep. Right.
Wait, man.